the shrinking cap, Grandpa? Catch me if you can! Grandpa! No! Be careful! Grandpa, stop! This is the one. This is the one. Yes, six more. It was the weekend, and Grandpa and I were playing with our Captain Dumbletwit game. Dad and Jemima were about to go to the hairdressers, and Mum was doing her new hobby. Mum's always taking up new hobbies. One week it's karate, then it's salsa dancing, then cake decorating. The ukulele, knitting, opera singing, <laughs> and now this photography. Mum had been practicing really hard, and this evening she was going to take a fabulous family photo. Are you coming to the hairdressers too, Jason? No, thanks. He looks fine just as he is. So do we. Don't be wolfy. Come on, Jemima. Time to go. Oh, by the way, Mum's invited somebody else to be in the family photo with us. Is somebody you've known since you were a little boy? Oh, no. It was Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. I didn't know what to wear, so I brought everything. Later. Bye. You better not look like that in the photo. Smile, please, Grandpa. But Grandpa didn't feel like smiling. Like most brothers, he finds his sister very annoying. You're early. Yes, well, I've got plans. For a start, you need smartening up. I'm not going to be seen in a photo with somebody with hairy nostrils. I haven't got hairy nostrils. All grandpas have got hairy nostrils. I'm going to set up my things in the kitchen. I'll call you when I'm ready. Oh, I've had enough of this. I've got to get out of here. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Grandpa, come back! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get to put all kinds of magical things. He can fly off in my plane. I'm ready! Grandpa was ready too, to fly out of the house and not come back. But instead, he flew behind the sofa. But just then, Great Aunt Loretta came into the room. Oh, where is he? Gone for a little lie down, has he? Oh, typical. Of course, Great Aunt Loretta has no idea about Grandpa's magic shrinking cap. Never mind. I'll deal with him later. Where's the other scruffy mutt in this family? Beowulf, where are you, you little monster? Great Aunt Loretta isn't very keen on Beowulf. And Beowulf isn't very keen on Great Aunt Loretta. Don't look at me like that. I've got plans for you, too. By the time I've finished with you, even Grandpa won't recognise you. Just then, the doorbell went. And guess who's coming to help me? Somebody who is very good with dogs. Psst, Jason. Hi, Beowulf. Quick. The dog groomer. Hello, Jason. I'm going to give your doggy a shampoo, a blow dry, and a snip, snip, snip. <laughs> so, where is she? It's a he, and he's called Beowulf. Beowulf? Oh dear. With a name like Beowulf, he sounds very scary and, well, wolf like. Oh, believe me, he's a monster. Now, show me what you brought. Miss Snip 
looked round nervously for Beowulf. Oh, I love these bows. Just look at these sparkly colours. Oh, we've got to get Beowulf in one of these. I knew Grandpa wouldn't want Beowulf to wear a sparkly collar. But first, I want you to give the smelly mutt a bath, Miss Snip. I'd hidden Beowulf behind the bin. I was sure Grandpa was hiding somewhere too. I was crossing fingers that they would both stay out of sight. Do you think Beowulf will mind smelling like rose and rhubarb? Make a change from smelling like Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, go and fetch a doggy towel. Right, come on. Time to go and find the monster. But I don't usually bath scary monster type doggies. Beowulf! I didn't like being out of the room with Grandpa Beowulf. on the loose. I was sure he would have a plan to help Beowulf. And Beowulf. I was right. Rose and rhubarb, revolting. But don't you worry, Wolfie. This is what we... She's coming back. Quick, hide. I rushed back into the kitchen, and Grandpa was looking for somewhere to hide too. He was in such a panic, he knocked over the bottle of shampoo. You can't get away from me. <laughs> Miss Snip, I found him. Come on. As I said, I don't normally bath, monster. Oh, he's not what I expected at all. I thought he'd be big and scary and wolf-like. Oh, silly me. You're not a monster, are you? You're a lovely boy. Oh, you are. You are. Enough of that. Let's get on with the bath. Great Aunt Loretta is always falling over and hurting her toe. Ouch, ouch, ouch. We have a bag of frozen peas in our freezer, especially for these moments. Oh, you don't fool me with your big brown eyes. You knocked that bottle over, didn't you? It's your fault. But it wasn't Beowulf's fault. It was Grandpa's. Where was he? I couldn't see him anywhere. We'll have to use washing up liquid instead. Put Beowulf on the table, Miss Snip. The good news was, now I knew Grandpa was hiding in the jug. You can use that jug. The bad news was that Miss Snip was about to fill it with hot water. But just then, Grandpa started growling, pretending to be Beowulf. <coughs> oh, Beowulf, look what you made Miss Snip do. Bad dog, no growling. I'm so sorry. Oh, dear, how silly. Luckily, Grandpa had managed to escape. I don't think Beowulf wants a bath. I tell you what, I'd just give him a lovely little trim. Snip, snip, snip. I knew Grandpa wouldn't want Beowulf snip, snip, snipped. I had to do something. No, you missed, you missed him in there. Oh, Behind you, there, there. So, while Miss Snip was clearing up the pieces of broken jug, I picked him up and ran off to the sitting room. Quick, Jason, put Beowulf next to me, then cover us with some cushions, then you hide too. But what if she finds you? Don't worry, I've got a clever plan. I didn't have time to find out what Grandpa's clever plan was, because at that moment, Miss Snip came into the room, and she had her trimmers in her hand. Beowulf, where is my lovely boy? Time for your snip, snip, snip. Now, don't be silly. I know you're here somewhere. Ah, oh, there you are. Good boy. This was a disaster. Miss Snip was about to find Grandpa too. Now, don't be scared. I'm going to make you all beautiful and tidy. Just a snip snip here and a snip snip there. Oh, no, you don't. You're not snip snip snipping me anywhere. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. He was pretending that Beowulf could talk. I don't need smelly shampoo or ribbons or a sparkly collar. I'm fine just as I am. Leave me alone or you will find out why I'm called Beowulf. Oh. Ah! OK, OK. I won't touch you, I promise. And don't tell anyone I can talk. No, no, I won't. I won't. Not a word. I promise. What is all this? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing. I, uh, 
don't think Beowulf needs snipping after all, or shampooing, or, or anything. I'm not much of a dog groomer, am I? Just terrified of dogs. Grandpa had done it. Sorry, I haven't been much help today. No, you haven't. But you can come and help me choose what to wear for this photo. Bring me back on. As soon as Great Aunt Loretta and Miss Snip were out of sight, I rushed over to Grandpa and Beowulf. Take your cap off! Quick, Grandpa! Grandpa took off his cap and came back to his normal size. We did it, Jason. We saved Beowulf from being groomed. That's what I call teamwork. Yes, Grandpa, teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> That evening, everyone came home and Mum got her camera ready to take the family photo. Where's Great Aunt Loretta? Loretta? Grab your minute! Oh. Hurry up, Great Aunt Loretta! Be quick, we're waiting! What are you doing? Just coming, hold on! And guess what? Miss Snip had groomed Great Aunt Loretta! 